Everything is connected. Once you're out of alignment, it's very hard to get it back into alignment globally. The pandemic brought unprecedented supply chain disruptions, leaving shelves empty and increasing prices on necessities. Products being manufactured and or grown. Um, however, they are not able to get to the right place at the right time, or they're not able to get packaged so they can get into the store. And climate change is complicating things even further by putting food production at risk. Extreme weather events are already impacting trade, travel, and agricultural production. A vast majority of the world's trade travels by sea. If you lose a port, you're gonna have to relocate those facilities. If you have more severe hurricanes and storms, you're at more risk of losing containers overboard or entire ships sinking. You're going to have to reroute to different transportation networks or switch from seaborne to other modes of transit. All of which is disruptive, expensive, and harms prosperity. For instance, more intense floods from powerful storms increases damages to homes and businesses, and that has a cause and effect relationship with supply chains. All the plywood and all the cement and all the construction materials and all the labor that goes rightly to help those people get back on their feet is not available to build a new house or expand the economy. And while that may be great for plywood sales in the short run, that is material now being diverted to compensate for climate damage instead of economic growth. So what's the supply chain solution? It's not an easy question to answer, but flexibility and a more geographically diverse supply are two crucial components. They've realized that just relying on a supplier in Asia is by no means going to cut it because weather conflict, all sorts of problems arise. When people say it's a choice, we either, you know, we only have so much money, we have to spend it on adaptation, which is making ourselves more resilient, seawalls on coastal, uh, in coastal areas or higher ground or putting your house up on stilts, uh, or we can invest in reducing our emissions. That's the wrong way to look at it. Companies have limited financial resources, but when they multi-solve, they simultaneously build resilience into their operations and their way of living and cut greenhouse gas emissions. Supply shortages caused by more intense weather patterns is one of the reasons we're also seeing a spike in food inflation. Food prices are up 30% over the past year, according to the Food and Agricultural Organization of the United Nations. Hotter temperatures are impacting our state's agriculture, while our citrus trees and other fruits and vegetables thrive during winter months, it's the summer months that are problematic. Yield growth for various crops are on a decline, and without effective change, the declines are expected to continue. The heat has also slowed livestock productivity in our state, impacting Florida's $900 million industry. Some estimates forecast global yields could decline up to 30% by the year 2050. That's why awareness is key as the first step in taking action it's not too late. There's no time to waste. We've delayed and delayed and delayed, but it's not too late to take action to build a safer future.